In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about this idea of taking data that's not meeting some of those tidy data format rules and moving them into that more standardized format so that we can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, in this case, we're going to talk about that issue of what do you do if you have variable information, information that you want to use that's kind of like represents part of the measurement of each observation, if you have that up in the column, in the column names rather than in a column. So in that case, what we really want to do is convert from data that's kind of in a longer format to data, excuse me, in a wider format to data that's in a longer format. And we'll use functions called pivot longer and pivot wider to do that. These are both part of the tidy R package. Um, you can also load them using the tidy verse package that will include the load of tidy R. And these let you change between data that's wider and data that's longer. These are a little bit new. As you look at code that's even a couple of years old, you might see the functions gather and spread. They're doing the same thing. Um, these just have a, a slightly nicer and easier to use format. So I recommend that you use these newer versions of them, but just be aware if you're looking at older uh, um, code that you get in one of your classes or something like that, you might see the gather and spread used to see, do the same job. So here's a description of these two. For pivot longer, it, it's going to be what you use if you have that wide data, especially wide data that's got values you actually care about in the column names. So in this case, it will take several columns, and you can specify which columns you want to pivot down, and it will pivot them down just to two. One of those final two will have what were originally the column names in them, and the other one will have what were originally the cell values in them. The second is pivot wider. In that case, you might have your data that's narrow, but you have two different variables kind of like um, um, alternating back and forth inside. So we saw an example in the very first lecture with mean, excuse me, minimum temperature and maximum temperature having that case in some weather data. So in that case, there actually were two separate variables and we want to have separate columns for those. So we're taking data and shifting it out, pivoting it out to have two columns from values that were listed before. So let's take a look at how that works. Here is an example where we might have data. Um, again, I'm going to draw on a Harry Potter example. Uh, so in this case, we have two students, Harry and Hermione. We have two different subjects, math and English, and then we have their grades in each of those subjects. Now, in this case, we have that case that we talked about earlier where we have um, data that we might want to use for fasting or colors of points or something like that. We have that data stored in column headers and column names rather than in values in the data frame itself. With the tidyverse way of, of coding and working with data, that's going to be really hard to use. So that's a case where we might want to get that down where it's in its own column. So what we can do in this case is we can pivot wider, excuse me, pivot longer to get that data longer. And when we do that, we will end up with a separate row for each combination of student and subject. So the observation unit now is for a combination of student and subject, and then we have that information on the grade. Now, by having subject as its own column, we can use that column, the values in that column, uh, for things like, like setting an indicator variable in a statistical model or coloring the points in a plot. If we have data that's in this format and we want to get it back to this format, again, there are a few cases where you might want to do that based on making the data tidy. Another case when you might want to do that is often these look nicer for a final presentation, like a final table that goes in a presentation or goes in a report. So if you ever want to do that, you can do pivot wider to get back from this longer format into the wider format. We'll go through some examples, and here, um, if you want, you can follow along. So you can do the tidyverse package. Again, this will load dplyr, but it'll also load tidyr and ggplot and a few others. Next, we can load the example data. So I've used tibble to form that, and we end up here with columns where each column name is a subject. So this is information that we might actually want to get in its own column to use. And then each row right now is giving a single student with the cell values giving the, the, um, the grade that the student got in that course. 
So if we want to change this, to pivot this longer, so we have a column with subject, we can use that pivot longer function. Let's do pivot longer. And then the first thing that we want to put in here is our data. So our data in this case is the Hogwarts type uh, Y. And note again, by putting this in as the first argument being a data frame, that means this is something we can pipe into. And a lot of times you will use it in a longer pipeline. So I'll show an example of how we can shift this to pipe the data in instead of specifying it as the first argument in just a minute once we go through this example. The next thing that you need to put is the names of the columns that you want to pivot. In this case, we want to pivot everything except for the student column. So one way we can express this, we can use those same rules that we use when we're using select. And if we want to say, I'd like to pivot everything from math through science, we can do math and then a colon and science. If, if you don't remember this way of kind of selecting columns, do go back and refresh a little bit on the different ways that we can, we can express the columns that we want to keep when we use the select function from dplyr. All right, next, we only have two more things we need to do. We need to say, what do we want the name of the column that has the information that's embedded in the column names right now? So in this case, I think subject might make sense. Like these are each subjects that you might take. And then the last thing is values too. And this is gonna be the column name for all of the things that are cell values right now, all of the things in the cells. These are grades, so let's put those in as grades. Now a thing to note here, for this names to and values to, when we're pivoting longer, we get to pick what we want to put in for these different values. These will become the column names, but it's not something that's in the data already, so you really get to pick something sensible for that. So let's run that, and now you can see it has pivoted that data down. So now we have a separate column for subject and a separate column for grades. Now, now that we have it in this format, there are some things we can do really easily. For example, we could go right into ggplot, and we could do, let's see, we could do subject, the x aesthetic, And then the grades, maybe let's do, let's do student and grades. But now that we have subject down here, we could do the color as subject. And then we could do points if we wanted to for that, for a really simple plot. So you can see now that we're able to use that information that was stored in the column names before. It was really hard to get to and use when it was up in that other format, but by pivoting longer and putting it in its own column, we can work with it in the same ways that we've been doing stuff up to this point. So these next few slides walk through some of the things we just covered in our studio. Again, specifying why this data set isn't tidy in the sense that we might want this information that's in the column names. Here is the code for doing the pivot to longer. And then the example of that longer data frame. So just as a reminder on this, the format for a pivot longer call is, and this is generic code just to say, show you the usage, but you put in the name of the data frame that you want. Then you list the columns that you want to include in pivoting down. Then you specify what you want the name of the column, the new column you're creating, where you will have those old column names, what you want that to be with names to, and what you want the column name for what used to be the cell values to be with values to. If you want to keep this to use later, do make sure that you reassign it. You can either overwrite what you have before or you could assign it to a new object name. A few important things to note here. Everything that you put in that calls argument, everything there is pivoted into one of two columns. It either, if it was a column name, goes into that, that names to column, or if it was a cell value in that part of the data frame, it's going to go into the column that gets the values to name. Again, I have pointed this out in the code, but just as a reminder, with names to and values to, you get to pick that name. Those are going to become the new column names. So that's not something you find in the data or something that you need to like figure, figure something specific out. You really can think what makes sense as a column name for these, and you just put that in as a character string. 
One other thing to note, sometimes you want to grab everything but one column. So again, you can use the select rules and you can use a negative to exclude what you don't want rather than listing everything you do want. So again, in the Hogwarts example, let's run that. We want everything but student to pivot. So instead of saying math to science, we could just say minus student. And that works the same way. Again, here's an example of how easy it is to plot the data now that we've gotten it in that standardized tidy format. Uh, this is using a slightly different example. In this case, I faceted by subject. Now, if you want to go the other direction, if you have it in a longer format and want to make it wider, you can use the pivot wider to do that. So let's take a look at doing that. Let's go here and actually name this. All right, so now we can look and you'll see that the Hogwarts is in this longer format. So now we could do pivot wider instead. Again, we'll start by saying which column name we want to work with. So in this case, it's that longer one, the Hogwarts one. And now we need to say where, which column, we need to specify two columns in that data frame. First of all, which column should we get the new column names from? And second, which column should we get the cell values from? So the first piece is the names from. We want the new column names to be these values that are in the subject column right now. And then we want the cell values to be the one that's in the grade. So that would be values from. All right, so we can run that. You can see it's made it wider again. Now, in this case, we didn't put quotation marks around the names from and values from because we're really talking about a column that exists in that data frame. So it's going to call it again as if it were its own object, its own vector. Um, conversely, when we do pivot longer, these are new names we've just come up with that we want to put in that place. So it's not referring to something that exists already. So in those cases, we are putting it in quotation marks. This is a topic that for a lot of people, it just takes some practice to get the hang of it and to get used to it. But it's well worth it because it's really, really valuable. A lot of times you can take a data frame where you can't really think how you could write the code to make a plot. And once you do these kinds of operations, all of a sudden it makes sense exactly how you can play around with it. And then for pivoting wider, again, it, it can be really helpful when you're trying to create attractive uh, tables from your data once you're done working with it to put in a final report or a final presentation. There are two chapters, chapters 12 and 13 of the book R for Data Science. This is a book I've linked to before, and if you Google it, you should be able to find the online version, or there's also a print version that, that's at a very reasonable price. Those chapters talk a lot more about these ideas of tidy data and then pivoting and joining different data sets. So I strongly recommend if you're struggling with any of these issues or just want more practice to check out those chapters. And as one note, the last time that I checked, R for Data Science, since it, it, it was published a few years ago, used those older gather and spread functions rather than the pivot wider and pivot longer. Um, but you should, those aren't too terribly different, so sh you should be able to replace all those examples with the examples using these newer functions.